April the 18th, 2001, is a great day on which the decade-long efforts of the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, were put to the severe and ultimate test. Yes, it was the day on which the first developmental flight of the geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle, GSLV in short, took place from the Sri Harikota range, popularly known as Shar, situated on the east coast of India. GSLV is a three-stage vehicle. It is 49 meters tall and weighs 401 tons at liftoff. The first stage consists of a solid propellant booster, one of the biggest of its kind in the world, as the core, with four liquid strap-ons around it. While the second stage is a liquid stage, the third stage is a cryogenic stage using liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen as propellants. The spacecraft and the equipment bay that houses the onboard processors, navigation and guidance system, vehicle telemetry, etc., are mounted above the cryogenic stage. They are encapsulated in a payload fairing which protects them from hostile flight environment during vehicle's ascent through the atmosphere. Each of the stages is connected by an interstage which also contains the necessary avionics for controlling the stage. The GSLV launch complex provides the complete support for vehicle assembly, checkout and launch operations. The individual stages and their subsystems are initially prepared and checked out in separate facilities before they are sent to the launch pad for integration. The first stage solid propellant booster has five segments, casing of which is made of high strength marriaging steel. All the segments are stacked one over the other to form the booster of size 22 meters tall and 2.8 meters in diameter and loaded with 129 tons of HTPB propellant. It burns for about 100 seconds and develops 4,500 kilonewtons of thrust. The mobile service tower, equipped with foldable access platforms, facilitates the vertical integration of the vehicle on the launch pad itself. Following the initial checks at the preparation facility, the strap-ons are brought to the launch pad one after the other for vertical integration with a core booster. Each strap-on loaded with 40 tons of unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide develops 700 kilonewtons of thrust in vacuum for 160 seconds. It measures 20 meters tall and 2.1 meters in diameter. After detailed checks, the fully integrated second stage is brought to the launch pad and placed over the fully assembled first stage. It carries 37.5 tons of unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide and its engine burns for 150 seconds developing 720 kilonewtons of thrust. The Russian built cryogenic stage powers the third stage of the vehicle. On completion of elaborate checks with vehicle electronics at the preparation facility the cryogenic stage is moved to the launch pad for integration. 
It carries 12.5 tons of liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen and burns for about 700 seconds, developing a thrust of 75 kilonewtons. The equipment bay that houses the onboard electronic systems is positioned over the cryogenic stage. The spacecraft comes to the launch complex about 30 days before the launch and undergoes checks and deployment tests. The spacecraft is interfaced with a payload adopter and then encapsulated in a 7.8 meter long and 3.4 meter diameter fairing. The encapsulated assembly is brought to the launch pad and integrated over the cryogenic stage. With this, the 70-day vehicle integration activity comes to an end. The countdown for launch commences 57 hours before the actual launch time. Besides the other crucial operations, filling of liquid propellants in various stages of the vehicle is carried out during this phase. About 16 hours before the launch, the mobile service tower is withdrawn. The vehicle now stands on the launch pad and is connected to the ground systems through electrical and fluid umbilicals. Separate storage, transfer and servicing facilities for UDMH, N204, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen are set up around the launch pad. The fueling operations on different stages and the final checkout of the fully integrated vehicle are conducted remotely from the launch control center situated six kilometers away from the launch complex. The mission control center is linked to all ground stations through cables and CCTV network. During the countdown, mission director and other senior scientists continuously monitor and conduct the launch operations from here. Indigenously developed high-precision monopulse radars form part of the tracking network. The complete telemetry and tracking of the vehicle, right from liftoff to the satellite injection, is provided by a network of four stations located at Shard and at the downrange stations at Port Blair, Brunei and Bayak at Indonesia. These stations are linked with Shard during launch to provide data in real time. A network of computers provides the real-time data processing support of tracking and telemetry. The Mission Control Center and Range Safety Console are all linked to this computer network for instantaneous data processing and display of the information. The Range Safety Officer keeps vigil on the flight trajectory and in case of gross malfunction gives destruction command to destroy the vehicle safely over the deep sea. Finally, during the last phase of countdown, at T minus 4.6 seconds, the L-40 strap-ons ignite. Only after confirming that their performance is normal, the launch computer commands the release of launcher hold release system and permits the core solid booster to ignite exactly at the count of zero.
GSLV performance is monitored in real time in the Mission Control Center. Within 17 minutes from liftoff, the GSLV completes its mission of injecting the satellite into the geosynchronous transfer orbit. Longest 17 minutes in all our lives, I think, but it was the most exciting and probably the most fruitful 17 minutes we ever had. The satellite is in the orbit, intended orbit, and you saw for yourself the, the velocity and the trajectory that the vehicle took exactly as we had planned. The launch of the GSLV marks the beginning of a significant phase in launch vehicle technology development for the Indian Space Research Organization, which already has an impressive record in the field of sophisticated launch vehicle and satellite technology.